Welcome back, everybody. The law of attraction, lust, <laughs> infatuation, or love. What are you feeling this Valentine's Day? Not quite sure? Well, that's why we have Dr. Angela DeRosa joining us this morning to give us some insight. She is a woman's health and hormone specialist. Mm -hmm. And doctor, well, first of all, thank you for the, the Valentine. Well, we gotta get that aphrodisiac going this morning with the chocolate. So for yeah. everybody, for you and Pat and the rest of the staff. Well, thank you, no, this is wonderful. <laughs> when we talk about lust, mm -hmm. love, infatuation, mm -hmm. what are some of the physical signs and symptoms. Yeah. So I'm sure every day when we come to yeah. work and we see that gorgeous guy that maybe it's a little taboo, we get that lust feeling, um, and then as that progresses to love, but that stimulates some really interesting hormonal chemical things that it happens in our body. So first and foremost, our heart rate starts to pick up because of the epinephrine and norepinephrine. Mm. It's kind of that fight or flight, but in this case, it is kind of that attachment and want to grab them and throw them on the ground <laughs> and start <laughs> kissing on them. But also we start to get what's called vasodilation. So the blood in our body starts, to, the, the vessels actually start to dilate, which causes the flush in our face and our chest and for women on the breasts. Um, and in the genital region. Um, so it kind of gives us that warm kind of sensation. As well as we also start to get kind of fluttering in our stomach, that butterfly sensation we talk about, sweaty palms. Sweaty palms. Yes. Well, and, and you know, the opportunity where you just can't make up a sentence. You know, you're just so, you're smitten, right? You're, you're just Your brain just kind of goes on off and mush. it's like st you start stumbling through your words and not really understanding what you want to say anymore. So you just become stupid, in other words. <laughs> Love is stupid. <laughs> okay, so let's say that this person that you are lusting over, mm -hmm ask you out. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I mean, how do you even attempt to go out on a date with this person and have all these feelings going on? Well, actually, in some people, it actually immobilizes them, where if you have strong panic or anxiety disorders, so those people actually would have that, that love sensation can be very frightening for them, but for most people, it's an exciting feeling, that anticipation of getting to know that person and the possibility of the life to, down the road for that person. So it's actually a very exciting time. Those feelings, those chemicals in our body, it also surges serotonin and dopamine in our brain, which makes us feel fantastic. It's almost like a high. Mm -hmm. It's almost, you can almost equate it to taking chemical drugs, those, those stimulants or heroin, um, why those drugs are so addictive. Love is an addictive hormone, and so, that's why we love love. Yeah, no, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> well, and when you're going from the lust to the love, mm -hmm. at what point are you transitioning mm. over where you may still have the butterflies, but yeah. you don't have the sweaty palms anymore. Mm. You can actually say a sentence <laughs> without just getting all mushy yeah. up on top there. Well, what's interesting about in women in particular, men actually tend to be more stable. They, they actually they get those similar love lust feelings, but they are wired differently than us. No, that's no kidding, right? Mm -hmm. But they tend to always have that lust phenomenon toward women much more so than women do. Um, what's interesting is women progress through relationships. Their chemicals in their brain starts to shift. So we go from that norepinephrine, epinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, to actually a more calming oxytocin, which oh. oxytocin is the hormone that's released to help with breastfeeding as well as that that bonding with our babies. Wow. And we actually start to bond with our partners chemically, which is interesting that usually occurs right around one year. And if you look at a lot of relationships, that's when the sex starts to decline and the uh, lust starts to decline. And a lot of husbands say, well, what happened to my wife? We're here at a year and mm -hmm. she no longer lusts after me. Well, we're switching to that bonding. And we always joke at conferences on sex, we say, well, what's the number one cause of low libido in women? It's actually being in a relationship longer than a year. <laughs> so, and not that we advise that you switch <laughs> yeah. out partners every yeah. year, but it shifts. And that's, I think that's biochemically, that, and from a biologic standpoint, that's good for us because we want to have our families and bonded close together. Okay, but so here you are in a relationship mm -hmm. longer than a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just had Pat and Duffy talking about yeah. their relationship. How do you keep love alive? And that can be very, very challenging because in Hollywood and the movies and books, we are constantly inundated about what a relationship should be like. It's always romantic, the flowers, the chocolate, and everything is lustful. We throw our clothes off at every moment, but life gets in the way. Mm -hmm. For most marriages, sex starts to decline over time and we start to develop that, that bonding. And it's important to still maintain that sexuality, but it needs to be worked at. You need to really make a conscious effort to keep that part alive because we're tired. We have children. There's stressors in our lives. We lose jobs. Those things can get in the way to that romantic attachment. You need to work at it. Scent 
Mm -hmm. The attraction of scent. What is it? The yes. pher pheromones. Pheromones. Yes. Pheromones. Mm -hmm. How much does that play into a, a relationship? Well, in biology, so in animal species, including humans, we're animal species. We secrete pheromones, and those pheromones can cause attraction from the uh, counter sex. So what's interesting when you look at, for instance, animals in heat, they are exuding all these pheromones to attract a mate into the environment to bring them to them. And there is, there's actually lots of companies making lots of money with those kind of things with secreting pheromones. Why do we spend billions of dollars on perfumes and all those scents? The because sense of the attraction. The, when you look at things that stimulate memories, scents, songs, all those different senses of our body can trigger different romantic emotions and also memories. And if people want to know more about this, you have a hormonal happy hour <laughs> taking place. Yes, we do. February 26, 6 yep. o'clock at Flemings, and you're talking yes, about? We're talking about love, sex, libido, and everything in between and how hormones play into it, but it's for women primarily. If a, man's a man is brave enough to want to come, I encourage you, but I <laughs> might feel a little uncomfortable. But we're going to talk about down and dirty stuff. How do hormones affect love and libido? What can you do to try to keep that alive in your relationship? And also sexuality and what's, what what can go wrong and how to fix it too. Keeping it alive and keeping yep. it real. Thank you so much. Happy, happy Valentine's happy Day. Happy Valentine's to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And happy Valentine's Day to all of you. We'll be right back after this.